On the build show today, three things they didn't tell you when you bought your tankless water heater. Now this video is intended for those of you that already have tankless, or if you're considering tankless. Let's say your tank has, has reached the end of its life, you're thinking about going tankless now, this video is gonna be helpful for you as well. Now first, let's talk about the benefits of tankless. I think the number one benefit of tankless is endless hot water. Really, there's no limit to how much water you can get out of this tank. Whereas a traditional tank, you've got a certain amount of runtime, and then boom, you're gonna start getting cold showers until that tank can fill back up with hot. Number two, there is no standby law. So in theory, we should have a very, very efficient unit. You go on vacation, it's not making any hot water for you. And lastly, size and placement. I love how tiny these are, even though there's a giant engine in here. This is a 200,000 BTU boiler inside this tank, 199, close enough. And if you're in the south, you can put them outside. So there's definitely a space savings. When this friend of mine pulled their tank out of their house and put this in, they gained back a couple square feet, you know, four, five, six square feet in the main part of their house. That's a big deal with going tankless and putting it on the outside. But there are a couple things that are downsides that you need to know about, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Today's build show all about tankless. Let's get going. Okay, the first thing they don't tell you about these units is there's no standing pilot, which means that if the power goes down, let's say if this gets unplugged or this plug is no longer hot, I got no hot water. You can open your faucets all you want, but nothing hot is gonna come out of this tank. So if you've got a brownout, if you've got a storm, anything that's gonna knock out your power means this tank is not gonna function for you. If you have a traditional tank, you're gonna have 50 or more gallons just sitting there and it's gonna take a while for that to get cold. So if you lost power for you know six or 12 hours, you could still take a hot shower before you went to bed. Now you can't overcome that, right? We could plug a generator in the backyard, run an extension cord, plug this plug right into it, and now boom, we're gonna fire back up. But you need to know about this before the storm comes and you realize, wait a minute, why is there no hot? Second, let's talk energy efficiency and cost of operation. Now, if you look at the energy guides on these units, you think that you're gonna save a lot of money on your gas bill, let's say. But in reality, I don't know that that truly happens. You know, for instance, at my house, I've got a tankless. I've got one teenager and I've got three soon to be teenagers. Man, they can take long showers. And without that, hey, it's getting cold, I need to get out feeling, I don't know what's stopping them, which means that those numbers in theory that you're gonna save, I don't know that that happens in reality. The best way to save money is to conserve and not actually use that energy. So set a timer and say, look, I'm gonna take seven minute showers and get out during that time. Make it happen, get out of that hot water, and then you're actually gonna save money. I'm trying to do that actually with my younger kids right now. I set a five minute timer and say, guys, you get five minutes to get a shower and that bell goes off, you get out. I'm hoping that as my boys become teenagers, they'll be more conservative with their time. But that's something that I think is not necessarily true about these tankless units. You buy them for the endless hot water, but you don't necessarily come through when it comes to savings. All right, and the third and final thing they don't tell you about when it comes to tankless is that these units do need service. They do need maintenance. You know, because the burner is so big, these are just shy. Most of them are 200,000 BTUs. That's the threshold for needing a different type of permit to put one of these in. 199,000 BTUs, that is a lot of heat. And with a copper boiler in there, it means that these create scale and you need to flush them on a regular basis. Now, if you have soft water, if you have a softening system, you're not gonna have to do that very often. But like I am, where I'm on city water that's pretty hard, and I've got a big family, I need to flush mine every 12 months or it scales up. And when that scale gets thrown off into my plumbing system, bad things happen. I have to end up removing all my aerators on my faucets. And in my case, I have a thermostatic valve in my master that has a screen on there. So if I cast scale off into my plumbing system, I actually have to pull my entire shower valve. Trust me, you do not wanna do that. You wanna maintain these every 12 months. Now you can do that yourself, and I've actually made quite a few videos about that process, but if you're gonna pay a plumber to come out and do that, you gotta know that's a 150, maybe $200 service, because it's gonna take them at least an hour plus their time getting there. So your savings, again, are gonna be reduced. Now if you, care, if you compare that to a traditional tank, 
where really all you need to do is drain it on an annual basis. And you do need to think about changing your anode rods every couple of years. Very less maintenance cost, quite a bit less than a tankless. Guys, hopefully this video was helpful for you. Check out my past videos about how to flush a unit. And I'm actually, after I'm done shooting this, gonna talk about maintenance. I've got all the tools and equipment out I need right here. So we're gonna do a full service on my friend's tank and show you how to do it. So stay tuned for that video. I'll have a link in the description once that's live. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.